Well, hello, and welcome to Opal City Confidential, a Starman podcast, episode 20. I can't believe I've done 20 of these, um, but I'm having fun. And today we're going to cover a little more Prince Gavin, the wonderful Starman created by Paul Levitz and Steve Ditko. And we will be covering Adventure Comics 373 and 374. Uh, which is moving the plot quite along. There are not many of these, and I've got my plans when this runs out, and um, I recover DC Comics Presents 36. I'm going to cover it differently than I did before, because I have talked to about it, but I'm going to cover it, maybe have a guest, and we will talk about how it re- uh, ties into this. But let's get started with a little information on Adventure Comics 473. This comic was cover dated July 1980. I was a, ooh, going into my sophomore year of high school so many moons ago. Executive editor was Joe Orlando. Cover artist Ross Andrew Dick Giordano. It's an okay cover. It's more predominant this time. It's Blasting Man gets the big thing and Starman gets the the little side box. I'm not sure I like Ross Andrew Starman. I'm just going to say end it there. Uh, cover, uh, but, you know, it is Andrew and Giordano, so it's pretty good. Uh, the name of this story is Twixt Hammer and Anvil. is written by Paul Levitz, penciled by Steve Ditko, inks by the amazing Romeo Tangel, colorist Adrian War- Roy, letter Gasper Saladino, editor Lynn Wine. All right, the story features Starman, supporting cast Queen, Queen Clarissa, Lady Miria, Jed Rykan, Montor, Montor, uh, Lord Protector Oswin is the antagonist, uh, but we also have Commodore Reichen, and this was reprinted in Steve Ditko on the Miss Volume 2. As there has been in the one we've been covering, there's no synopsis, so I'm going to go through this quickly, page by page, very quickly, and kind of give you the... Uh, what's going on as I'm telling you what I think about it. It picks up where the last issue left off, where Queen Clarissa is in the little glob ship they stole from that living vessel. Starman is protecting her from the the fleet of bad guys um, who are ultimately under, you know, it's Protector, Lord Protector Oswin, and they're, they're, they're kind of trying to see what Starman's powers are and they're bombarding him with energy he's absorbing it it's overwhelming him so he uses it he creates a blinding flash it cripples all the shifts and then he pushes the little globe away and then queen clarissa starts wanting to give him a present give you know give herself to her hero not realizing ooh, icky it's her brother uh and he's a little icked out and then we cut away to throne world where uh, Miria and Jedediah have landed in the gardens. They're, you know, and they're, she swears for him, saying that she is here, you know, uh, she's the ranking royal member of the family, royal family member. Montor shows up. They have a con, uh, and tells him, you know, and gives Starman some info about the living sphere as part of this ship, and it's a living ship. And they're like, well, we'll help you, but you can't, you got to leave the piece of the ship you've been hidden in. So they create a globe, a protective bubble, and they fly off. And they head, they're head. they heading back. They don't head back to the throne world because, you know, he knows there's something going on. And they, they've explained it to the queen that Oswin's the bad guy at this point. Uh, Lady Mira comes in and she finds out. It, Lady, Lady Mira, Mira comes into this place where Jedediah is being held by guards and then uh, Oswin comes in, and that's when they find out he's been made regent of the Empire because the Queen is missing. Um, so, see, another it's another one of those simple eight-page stories. Um, it's got a lot of good action, you know, um, some beautiful Ditko space battles, um, wonderful inks by Romeo Tangel. The plot moves along, you know. We're, we're, I think this kind of eight-page, the pacing's pretty good. It's a little wordy for eight pages, but... You know, it's Paul, and I love that. <laughs> but, it, you know, the characters are developing. Um, there's some, you know, the falling in love with the sisters a little too Luke and Leia for me. It just doesn't, you know, how does she not know it's her brother? His freaking jaw is sticking out of the mask. I have three sisters. They would, if I showed up in that costume with a blonde wig, they would know it was me. 
Okay? He's, you know, they, you know, suspension of belief is a comic book. But it's really beautifully um, drawn, laid out. Uh, I did, this is some of my favorite Ditko stuff. I have to say that this is really some of my favorite Ditko stuff. So, let's move on to 474. This comic was cover dated August 1980, on sale date May 22nd, 1980. Uh, it was 40 cents. Oh my good goodness. Editor Len Wein, same credits on the other one and reprinted in the same volume of Ditko's uh, Omni- Omnibus, Volume 2, 2012. I may have to look at that. If they're, I wish they, if they're all in there, I may buy it. I'll have to go look. I am an Omni guy. So let's kind of go through this. So, um, Starman is flying uh, Clarissa off to a place to hide out. And Montour gave him the coordinates. And they get there, and it looks pretty barren. And they're traveling. She's still trying to hit, hit on him, which is kind of icky. But she's kind of calmed that down. She puts a headband over her head to cover her the, the royal mark. They fly, and they, let, they land. They see these people, and that's when they realize they're on Asrix, the prison planet. And and they this is where they assume that Oswin would have sent um, Mira and R- Jedediah. So the robot guards kidnap, uh, sneak up behind them once they get the information they need and zap our hero and his sister. And then we cut away the throne word where Oswin is talking to, you know, his counselors and the Ad- Commodore Riken. And they talk about their working on, between the two of them, they, they kind of start their plan about how to turn, to give him the throne, even though he's not eligible for it. Um, so, being the sneaky little bad guys. Um, Starman wakes up in a cell with uh, the queen, but it's, he has no powers. His um, gauntlets are gone. His power is gone. So when the robots come in, he uses some of his athletic training to get to leapfrog over them. Gets into the hallway where one of the robots has his gauntlets. um, And he does a little more Ditko-esque jumping. Avoiding the thing. uh, Avoiding getting shot by the robots. And then melts him once he gets his powers. He saves the queen. She hits on him again. Um, She she says, I'm not used to having faith, Starman. It's not not a very imperial emotion. But then none of the feelings you stir in me are very imperial. Oh, icky oogie. Oogie, oogie, oogie. Uh, they let all the prisoners out, and that's when they see Lady Mirror and Jed Reitkin. Um, the Queen forgives Reitkin for whatever fake crime was put against him. And then we cut back to Throne World, where Oswin is in his office, and you hear a voice, Lord Protector Oswin. What who? You may call me Mto, Lord Protector, and I have come for you. And then it says, Next. An empire in the balance. So we don't have many more issues. Um, and let's see. Before we get to, there'll be one, two, two more episodes with the Ditko stuff. So four more issues. And then DC Comics presents 36. And I'll probably touch on Starman's death and crisis because that's what comes chron- chronologically after that. But let's talk about the, these two issues. It's, you know, if this was a single issue, it'd been a good part one and part two. You're getting the players in place. Um, and I really like it. I mean, I'm really enjoying these. They're really basic, but they're, it's a good Paul Levitt's, uh space comic. It, it, it clicks all the boxes that say a very early star, Starlin cosmic hero. I like cosmic heroes. A lot, especially the ones in the 70s. And that's kind of what I think they were going with here. And I think it works. I think it's beautiful. Check them out. I mean, these are short episodes because not a lot to talk about because they're these little mini stories. Um, And I've really enjoyed them. Uh, I'd love to hear your input. Um, Please reach out and share what you think of these characters and this series. I'd really like to hear it because, you know, instead of just me talking. Let's hear some of your input. I, I really appreciate it. So, folks, um, t- Thursday will be Legion. I will do it. I've got a crazy week at work, so it'll be the Thursday, Friday, but that will be what pops up. 
I'm going to be recording soon with Kirby, and we're going to cover some Secret Six. And Jimbo posted something that when he gets back from a trip, we're going to do, we're finally going to do Legion Star Trek. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, any suggestions on Marvel story arcs, teams, whatever, give me suggestions. I'd really appreciate it. But until next week when you get to hear me and Dave Steele talk Starman Volume 2, Issue 11, Ta- Tales of Time Past, um, I'd like you to go that, you know, just be safe, be smart, be kind to everybody, and read some comics. Mm-hmm.